In this video, we're going to have a look at how to rationalize the denominator. Now, something with an irrational denominator could look like that, where the denominator is just uh, the root of something, or it could also appear in that form, where you've got a denominator which is a wee bit more complex, which has maybe a whole number part coupled with uh, a root of a number. Now, the process of rationalizing the denominator is quite straightforward. All you have to do is multiply each of your fractions by something equivalent to 1. Now, what you multiply by is always the denominator divided by itself, because you know that anything divided by itself has a value of 1. So when you multiply 5 over root 3 by root 3 over root 3, you end up with a numerator of 5 root 3 over, and then root 3 times root 3 is 3. So the square root of 9, which is 3. And that's you done. That's all you have to do. So for this one, 4 over root 5, you just simply multiply by the denominator divided by itself, which has a value of 1. So you're not changing the value of the fraction you've given. So you end up with a numerator of 4 root 5, and on the bottom, root 5 times root 5, root 5 squared is 5. And that is you done. Now for this one, we just multiply by root 6 over root 6, our denominator divided by itself, and we end up with a numerator of 7 root 6 over root 6 times root 6, which is 6. And that is as finished. Now, as we were saying, sometimes you can get examples which have a denominator which is a, a wee bit more complicated. Now, you could multiply everything through by 4 root 3 over 4 root 3, and then you'd have to simplify it. But you're far easier just taking the root part of the denominator and multiplying the whole thing by that root divided by itself. And so we multiply by root 3 over root 3, and that gives us 5 root 3 as our numerator. And our denominator, because root 3 times root 3 is 3, four threes are 12, and that's as done. Okay? And we can't simplify 5 twelfths, so that's as each our final answer. So for this one, we just multiply by root 7 over root 7, and that leaves me with a numerator of 4 root 7. And then root 7 times root 7 is 7, and 3 7s are 21. Again, we can't simplify 4 over 21, so that's our final answer. And as for this one, we multiply by root 2 over root 2, and that leaves me with 7 root 2 as my numerator. Root 2 times root 2 is 2, 5 2s are 10, and that's my final answer. 7 root 2 over 10. So here are four questions for you to try yourselves. Pause the video, see how you get on, and then check back to see if your answers are correct. Okay? So, looking at this one, we just multiply by root 5 over root 5, getting an answer of 8 root 5 divided by 25. And that's us done. For this one, multiply by root 7 over root 7. We end up with an answer of 3 root 7 over 7, because root 7 times root 7 gives me a new rational denominator of 7. For this one, all I do is multiply by root 3 over root 3. So I end up with 2 root 3 on the top, and on the bottom, 4 times 3, which is what I get when I do root 3 times root 3. 4 threes are 12. Now, careful with this one, because 2 twelfths simplifies to a 6, so you can end up with root 3 over 6. Again, that's got a rational denominator. There's no root appearing in the denominator at all. And for this last one, we end up with as multiplying by root 2 over root 2, which gives me 5 root 2 on the top, and 6 times root 2 times root 2, it's the same as 6 times 2, which is 12. And that there is my final answer. So that's how you rationalize uh, the denominator.
when you're given a fraction which has an irrational denominator. Multiplied three by a fraction which has an equivalent value of one, and that's it. Quite straightforward. Okay, so I hope that was helpful.